Good morning, folks. We've got a number of key stories from the science journals to hit today, but the thing we're starting with is classic space weather. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com. The last 24 hours on our star started off pretty quietly. Then as the sunspot dropped its flaring and the solar wind hit stability here at Earth, the northern filament erupted. That was the enormous snaking plasma filament coming in behind the coronal hole. It lifts, and as it erupts, you can see the hider flare below it. It was just about a week ago that the leading portion of the filament became visible as the solar tornadoes cresting over the limb, but they spilled over at high altitude and produced the long snaking filament that isn't there anymore. Folks, this is not large enough to be scary, but scientifically relevant for sure. The CME visible on stereo this morning appears to have reached low enough heliographic latitudes to affect Earth, which is off screen to the right. Minor geomagnetic storms may be expected because the CME would be coming in right behind a coronal hole stream. It's expected in about three days. Top quake of the last day was another aftershock near the South Sandwich Islands. Hopefully it stops shaking down there at some point. And we're off to the article, starting with a bit of cosmology. You get two guesses on this one, you should only need one. Did they find dark matter in the form of dark photons in the Super Mag dataset? Okay, I'll cheat for you. No. Up next, it may seem mundane to observers that a country's grids are specifically said to not be able to handle a Carrington-level solar storm, but that expressed recognition is rare. It's implied all over, it's mentioned at conferences and gatherings, but indeed, great to see the math flushed out in the peer-reviewed journals. Bit of a spooky forecast if it's correct here. Another forecast for a scary peak of this sunspot cycle by investigating storm occurrence patterns. Folks, in this new paper, they are predicting storm rates closer to what we had in solar cycle 21, which would be a tremendous bit higher than most of the world predicts for the sunspot cycle, and likely more than the grids could handle. And last but not least, we had shared this preprint weeks ago, but now it's accepted and published in the journals. The large upper sky magnetic events are vortices, like a tornado of plasma and electromagnetism. And it's not only one of the key ways that the sun and earth systems couple on that energy exchange takes place, but it's a nod at the macro scale to the plasma cosmology. And those ionospheric magnetic vortex disruptions can also be logically expected to become more extreme the more of Earth's magnetic field we lose in the modern excursion. We greatly appreciate your support. If you didn't catch our video last night, please check out our message to NASA's Karen. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.